a waffle time. We haven't done a waffle in a long time. A long, a long time? <laughs> um, yeah. But it's taken. So today I was going to talk about... I just want to talk about uh, collecting. Funnily enough, yeah. Um, these waffles were meant to be kind of a how to collect. I think what I want to do, I was initially going to do, because it's a, the first waffle of the year, I was going to do it from the top. Um, a basically how to collect. Um, so if you want that, let me know. Definitely want to do that. Might be as a video. I'll go through as a rundown on a video instead of doing and just showing i don't know we'll see we'll see let me know again please do let me on let me know in the comments because i want your feedback i want lots of feedback um so today we're just going to be talking about collecting and i was thinking i was watching i'm not in the middle of the screen am i <laughs> i was just watching i know it's a bit of a different angle in it today Leprechaun. Um, I was watching a live stream. Uh, I won't name. I won't name it. Um, it was a toy live stream. I thought I'll watch this. Um, I went in the chat. Said hello. Nobody said hello. I hate that when you're uh, like new in the chat and people don't talk to you. I think when I would definitely in my chats. You guys are always saying hello, hello, sir, welcome. We're always welcome a new person. And please keep that up. Please do keep that up because uh, um, we need to welcome more people, especially to the channel, but into collecting as well. So I wanted to I wanted to do a video on understanding the different types of collectors, to be honest with you. This live stream that I was watching, there was more 90s collectors, I think. I do feel that there is niches of different time frames of collectors. I just want to go through those, a few of these. I've, I've, I've been looking it up. I've uh, I found this quite interesting article, actually. Um, toy collecting has become a popular hobby worldwide, attracting a vast, diverse community of enthusiasts. So, yeah. Um... I mean, most of the most of you lot, my, my viewers, are mostly are eighties, seventies, eighties collectors like me. Now there is, I think, the nineties collectors as well, which um, there are. Sorry, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's quite quite good light that. Yeah, that's quite good lighting. Um, it just, I don't know. I just just they're young whippersnappers. They're not. We're all in this together. But I just feel that I don't know if it's me. It's, it's probably it is my. It is me. It is me, and I feel like I'm missing out something. But not, not, not necessarily not knowing about those toys because I do and I respect them collecting it. But I think I have a different style, different wants and needs of of collecting as well. I don't know. Let me know what you think about that. I mean, a lot of you, I, I know a lot of people do actually watch me that um, are 90s collectors and and further on. I, I the first, the last toy I collected was um, Real Ghostbusters. So I missed out on Turtles. I missed out on Mask. I, I actually missed out on, um, I didn't really miss out on Transformers and Motu. They were there when I was collecting, but I was collecting Star Wars. And I was focused on that. Um, I don't know if I, I think price point comes into it as well. I think the the He Man figures were double price, double the price of the Star Wars figure, and obviously the Transformers were up there um, for obvious reasons. I just want to start off with a fact as well. A, a toy collection, toy this toy collection is officially named an assembly. There you go. Fact of the day. Avengers assemble. Um, so I'm, I'm just gonna I'm gonna read through this this article. The, uh, from the vintage action figures to rare board games, there's a collector for every type of toy imagination. It's different from what I was actually trying to convey here. 
Um, but we'll read it anyway. Each collector has their unique preferences, motivations, and reasons for indulging in a passionate pursuit. In this article, we will explore some of the different types of toy collectors and gain a deeper understanding of their motivations and interests. So, we're going to look at this, the, the vintage enthusiasts, comic books, board games, um, puzzle masters, completionists, pop culture devotees, the art collectors, the investors. We'll go through it, but what I'm trying to think of really is um, like a time frame because yeah, we've, you've got your train collectors which is probably 50s, 60s, earlier, I know, 50s, 60s, with the diecast as well, dinky and things like that. Um, obviously, pre-war, up to up to the 60s, 70s. Um, then you've got your matchbox collectors, your Gorgi collectors. And then, obviously, your pop culture collectors didn't really come into it until the 70s. Pre-Star Wars, I miss pre-Star Wars. You had the $6 million man, you had uh, Evil Can Evil, he has all sorts of pop culture toys, Starskin, the Mego, Planet of the Apes, anything like that, pop culture, which is what I'm, I'm a pop culture collector, basically. That's what I, what I collect, pop culture. If I'm, if I'm going to read this, I think I'll put myself in the pop culture department category. Um, cause that's what I like, TV and film. Um, do the auctions, do the Vectis auctions, and they're always the TV and film ones. Um, so there's a lot of auctions coming up. To keep keep tuned on the channel. There's a lot of auctions coming up. Mostly back end of the month, but on the run up to the end of the month, it's going to be going to be very busy, very busy. Um, the vintage enthusiasts. I'm, I'm kind of. I don't know. Vintage. I'm vintage enthusiast, but pop, vintage pop culture. Pop, vintage pop culture. Hard to say. One of the most prevalent types of toy collectors is a vintage enthusiast. These collectors focus on acquiring toys from bygone eras, often seeking items that invoke a sense of nostalgia from their own childhood. Vintage fi action figures, dolls. Yeah, um, yeah, okay, it's, a, it's officially a doll. Uh, <laughs> model cars are some of the most sought, most sought after items in this category. These collectors often value the historic significance and rarity of the toys, appreciate them as pieces of art and cultural artifacts. So yeah, I can I can probably put myself in that. I want I want I'm going to read these out. So I want you to put yourself in a category. I know most of you be the same category as me, but you know there might be some people out there that comic books, comic book fanatic. Comic books have captivated audience for decades and comic books collect to extend their passion to toys. I mean, you, you can collect toys and comics, it doesn't really. You can collect more than one thing, can't you? Based on their favourite characters from Marvel to DC, there are an abundance of toys available, ranging from action figures to plush toys. So yeah, it's, it's like a toy collector. It's not necessarily as comic books, is it? It's, it's figures and toys connected to the comic book characters. I think that's what this means. These collectors often have an uh, intimate knowledge of the comic book universes and take pride in their extensive collections. I think I could, I think I could probably put myself in each of these categories, to be honest with you. Uh, the thrill of obtaining limited edition toys and exclusives is a significant driving force for the type, this type of collector. And I think there's a bit of a, I think there's a bit of all of us in each of these categories. The board game aficionado. Board games have always been a beloved form of entertainment. And many collectors are devote their building their board game collections. This individual, uh, these individuals appreciate this. The strategic elements of social interaction that board game provides. For them, the board games are not just toys, but also a means of fostering quality time and strengthening relationships. Okay. Hmm. I won't go that far. I, I was an only child and I got so many board games and I never played them because I was by myself. Um, <laughs> the uh, benefits of board games are family bonding and engaging in family activities cannot be overstated. These collectors actively seek out new releases, limited editions, vintage board games and that hold a historic value. I do look for old 
board games I don't like the old board games Waddington's things like that and things that game I mean I, I usually find a game that I've never seen before and I didn't know about which I love exploring the fascinating history of classic board games also adds another layer of interest for this type of collector so yeah yeah board games yeah Puzzle Masters this one's for Cat Puzzle games have long been hailed the ability to provide stress relief to promote mindfulness. The therapeutic aspect attracts a significant type of toy collector, the Puzzle Master. These collectors find solace and relaxation and in intricacy of puzzles, whether they're jigsaw puzzles, brain teasers or 3D puzzles. The therapeutic power of puzzle games of stress relief is well documented, making them appealing choice for those seeking a mindful and calming hobby. That's cat. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, the completionist. I don't. I, well, well sometimes, maybe. <laughs> the completionist is a type of collector who strives for completeness. Fun, funnily enough, yeah. Uh, in their toy collections, they're not satisfied with just having a few items from a specific line. I kind of am. I kind of am. If I go after one line, I want to get it complete, obviously. But I would rather have little bits from each collection than... I don't know. Well, it's a mixture. Their goal is to collect every variant, edition, and accessory available. This type of collector often invests significant amounts of time, effort, and resources to track down rare and hard-to-find items. This is what being a collector is about. Um tracking things down that's what collects that's what that's what's been I mean yes searching eBay for hours is trying to track them down but these other resources and reading reading and finding out which things you'll need for your collection and if you're going to collect something I always say get a guidebook first just to teach yourself what what um, what is in that collection, basically. The satisfaction of completing a collection is the ultimate reward for the completionist. Now, I've just completed the um, episode one line. I've got all 50 figures. Now, I've got four accessory packs. There is another four accessory packs. But they're very expensive and quite hard to find. Not going to go after them. I'm not going to go after them. I mean, I could go to the, get the vehicles and all the, the other bits, but yeah, I'm quite happy with the 50 figures that I do have. Yeah. I mean, if, if I found them at a decent price and, you know what I mean, yeah, I would probably pick them up. The Pop Culture Devotee. That's me. I think this that this probably sums me up. We'll read it and find out. Pop culture is a powerful force that influences our lives in countless ways. Some toy collectors focus their efforts on collecting toys that represent their favourite movies, TV shows or video games. These collectors are passionate about their characters and storylines that have captured their hearts. For, from Star Wars to Harry Potter, there's no, sort of, there's no shortage of toys available for these dedicated collectors, which is true, but there's no other than Star Wars and Harry Potter. But I see, I can see what it is. I think I think that sums me up pretty much. Uh, the artist collector. For some collectors, toys are not just objects to be displayed there, but canvases for artistic impression or expression. Probably a bit better. These artists transform plain toy figures into unique works of art through customizations, repaints, and modifications. Unless it's Star Wars. <coughs> the artist collector sees the toys a blank, a slate. An opportunity to showcase their creativity and individuality. They customize, basically, out there. These one of a kind creations often become highly sought after pieces in the collector community. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, the investor, last but not least, we have the investor. This type of collector views toys as financial assets and potential investments. There's, there's a bit of me in there. The bit of me with the, the dealer part of me from God knows when. Um, 
I firstly look for myself, but if I see something that I know I can get, I can flip for more, obviously, with my knowledge, I use my knowledge to know that I'm going to get money for it. It's not really, an inv it's not, I don't see these, in, I don't see my collection as an investment, but I kind of know, know the the value of it because I have to from from when I when I um, was a valuer and just just to do these videos as well. Uh, a lot of people like the, the value of videos. I need to get back to doing those. So knowing the values, it, it helps. It helps, but it's not it's not for for my financial gain unless like I say I see something that I don't want for myself. But I know that I can, I can flip it. It's like the the kung fu, the black belt game that I got the toy for. I got it for twelve pound. I loved it because I used to have it and I've forgotten all about it until that minute until I saw it again, and I wanted to keep it. So I showed it and um, somebody offered me a lot of money for it, and I had to really think about it. It's a rare piece, and I probably will never see. Well, I probably will see one again, but you just yeah, it's it probably one of those things that you regret selling in the end. Um, but it's one thing that I regret selling at the moment, which I'm trying to get back. But that's another story. Um, where were we? Uh, they carefully research market trends, anticipate future demands, and make strategic purchases. With the hope of realising a return of the investment. I don't do that. I don't do that. Maybe I should do it more for, for videos. Um, limited editions, rare variants. Yeah, I do. I know I, I, if I see those, I'll pick them up. The, um, not Action Fleet, the... Oh, it's about the column. The ones that look, the new ones that look like Action Fleet. I, I forgot what they call them because I bought them for a long time. I haven't really looked at them for a long time. I know there's an attack out which I would love, but I've not seen them yet. Um, I saw the shuttle, which would have been nice to pick up, but I just, I just don't feel like um, I should be bothered about them unless they are chasers. Now I did pick up a few chasers and flipped them for double the price, which was kind of cheap, really, but. Um, I know, I know I can make money on the chasers, like like the saying here. Um, it's just knowing, it's knowledge. That's all you need, a bit of knowledge. And knowing that, oh yeah, that's a, that's a chase. It's like the, the, the Hot Toys, Hot Toys, uh, Hot Wheels. Um, the Treasure Hunt Hot Wheels. Now, the Treasure Hunts are not, not necessarily gonna make you any money. They'd probably maybe get double what you paid for them, but if I see one, I pick one up because I, I love them. I love I love looking for them. I've never found a super treasure hunt, and if I did, um, really depends on what price I get for it. But I probably will would flip it. Um, but but the treasure hunts I either have I keep in my cabinet. <laughs> but I just know I just know that they are not rare, but they are the chase variants of. I like I like looking at chase variants of any any toy basically, um, so yeah, a limited edition rare variants and toys associated with iconic characters hold a uh, particular appeal to those collectors. Yeah, so that's that's the investor. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call me himself an investor. Um, I mean, I've got these. I've got the full. Well. 95, I need the Yak Face, obviously. Uh, I've got the, almost the complete run of Star Wars figures. Now, I know the value of them, but I just haven't got them for, for investment. They're not, they weren't bought for investment. They were bought f for collecting pleasure. And um, basically for something for me to do um, at the beginning of my collecting, my third collecting life, fourth collecting life, whatever. <laughs> So in conclusion, in conclusion, 
The world of toy collecting is a vibrant and diverse community with collectors co encompassing a wide range of interests and motivations. Whether driven by nostalgia, artistic expression or the thrill of the hunt, collectors find joy and fulfilment in assembling their prized collections. Understanding the different types of toy collector allows us to appreciate the depth and diversity within this fascinating hobby. And this is what I want to get across. Not necessarily you people out there, because you know I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here. YouTube does not have a category for toys and hobbies. I joined an influencer program yesterday. They are yet to go on YouTube, but it's Instagram and they don't have a toy and hobby category. So the companies that they push forward to influencers, not influencers, you know what I mean? Um, these companies are giving away so much, but the, what I was looking for, there's no toy, there was like, you know, like kiddies toys and things like that, but no collector's toys, which is a shame. And I actually put it forward to them, I emailed them and, and said, look, when you get YouTube, please, can you do a toy and hobby category or a collector's category? Um, I think that would benefit, benefit me, obviously, and everybody else in the collector community has got a YouTube channel. Um, click here to read about the benefits of board games. Click here to explore the therapeutic power of puzzle games. Click here to d delve in the fascinating history of classic board games. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, no. Um, so, yeah, that is... I will put the, the link to this article in the description. Read it for yourself. It's pretty, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. What is the rise of collectible toys? The rise of collectible toys has brought joy, connection and nostalgia to countless individuals around the world. The act of collecting these items provides a sense of accomplishment, taps into our innate nostalgia, preserving cherished memories for a lifetime. There we go. That is um, a very good paragraph to end on, I think. Uh, so, next time... I think we need to um, go back to basics. And I think I have done a how to collect. I think it's mainly on Star Wars, but I think we'll go back and we'll do not necessarily a video on it. We'll just uh, we'll just talk about it and we'll we'll start from scratch. And then I want you to come up with topics for us just to discuss. Don't forget, I'll be doing the uh, the Breakfast Club. Most mornings, I think, uh, if I'm not busy, we'll be doing a breakfast club, um, so we can talk about the, the daily news or whatever as as we as we get up. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Please press that thumb button. Pew, pew, pew. Uh, press that because that really helps the channel. The the view, firstly. Secondly, peace. Uh, secondly, is the thumb. So it's that, it's that in it. Um, that really helps. So thank you. Uh, just, just before I go, check out my new merch. I've put two new. It takes it takes so long to put any any new merch up because it's a pain in the ass. But please check those out. Shirts, t-shirts, jumpers, hoodies, mugs. And I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. May the toys be with you. The interesting thing is they call it pyroprocessing, but it's a molten salt process. They're dissolving this thing in a molten salt, and they're doing electrochemistry on it. Why don't they call it molten salt? Cool. 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 <laughs>